Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's warfare. That's warfare. See, you got to get radical with warfare. You want to break some yokes, destroy some things and works of the enemy. You got to get in warfare. You got to camouflage yourself. Hey, you got to get dressed. Hallelujah. From the head to the feet. You got to put on the right gear so that you can be able to stand in the days of evil. When the things are coming against you so you are able to stand and war against the attack of the enemy. You can't just be going around and you open. Hallelujah. You got to have a shield on. You got to cover your heart. You got to have something on your head to cover your mind so that you're able to still go forth. You need a belt of truth buckled around your waist so that you can have everything else that you need to hang on to that. And then you need the sword of the spirit so that you can be able to cut that enemy down. Hallelujah, because he's already under our feet. Hallelujah. God just gave me that song when we were sitting there. Angie had asked me, did I have a song? She couldn't find the song that I requested. And I said, well, that's all right. Don't worry about it. And then God dropped that in my spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Warfare. Yeah. Some of the things that you're dealing with, it's going to take some warfare. Yeah. It's going to take some getting up, putting yeah. some music on, and, 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 and battling this thing in the spirit. Yeah. It's going to take some speaking in tongues. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's going to take some deep prayer. Yeah. It's going to take some getting on your knees and as you're crying, you're calling out, Lord, destroy the works of the enemy. Set my love one free. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Set them free, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Set them free, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Destroy the yokes yeah. of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We are kingdom people. Yeah. One of the things that we can notice about the people in Ukraine, they're saying we're going to battle. They made a decision that I'm going to die in this thing if I got to die in this thing because I'm going to protect this land. My little ones are going to be in this land and their little ones are going to live in this land. So if it takes me to die to uphold what is right so that they can have freedom, I'll die. That's what Christ did for us. For us to be free. Blood had to be shed and not the blood of animals and goats. It didn't satisfy him. It didn't appease him. He needed the blood of his son. He needed the blood of a holy one without a defect. No impurities on him at all. That's what he needed. And that's why he went to the cross. He loved us. We never met, never met him. We never saw him with our eye. But we love him. We're grateful yes. because we begin to understand what all he has done yes. for us and what he's doing. Amen. If you got something and you appreciate it, that was a gift from God. Yes. Hallelujah. He said every good and perfect gift come from me. Hallelujah. It comes from him. Yes, yes. Every good and perfect gift. That's why he is worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Continuously. Continuously. And heaven is continuously praise. Hallelujah. Whenever we think about him, there should be a thank you coming out of our mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he blessed. I mean, as you get older, you begin to understand about these bodies more and more and more. You begin to understand about energy and strength. You begin to understand more about your immune system and stuff like that. What it can take and what it can't take. Hallelujah. As you get older, more and more wisdom comes forth on what it is you need to do to take care of yourself. Amen. Amen. So my message today is titled, Enmity Between the Woman and the Serpent, Looking at Mary. This is an interesting thing, uh, leaving from speaking about Eve and then to go into looking at Mary 
and what all she was chosen, didn't know she was chosen. Did you know that you've been chosen for some things and you didn't know you was chosen? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Some troubles and things that came in your life, you were chosen? Uh huh. Because he, he, he had a plan for you in the midst of that trouble and things that you were going through? Hallelujah. Mary just going on about her business, not paying any attention to uh, 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 other things, just doing the normal daily things that this teenager would do. I would say about a 16-year-old. Hallelujah. How many of you know some 16-year-olds? And can you imagine the duties <laughs> that a 16-year-old, this 16-year-old girl was facing? Now you think about your 16 year old or think about yourself when you were 16. Amen. God's hand was on this young girl. Everything was ripe. It was the perfect time. She was from the perfect lineage and Joseph was from the perfect lineage. And these two come together from the tribes of Jacob. It was perfect. Perfect timing. How do they say? A perfect storm. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Yes. All right, let's go into the word. Father, I thank you for your word, Lord God. You said that oh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Lord, I need your strength today. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, let your word go forth and let you be glorified and praised in our things. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Keep that 16 year old in your mind. I mean, our 16 year old, we got to. Tell them how long you've been on that, uh, how long you've been on the phone, how long you've been on your tablet, and uh, that's basically their world. Yeah. That's basically the world. You don't even hear from them. You don't even know they're in the house. Where are they? You know, you call them down to come eat. Okay, they come eat, they gone, they disappear again. Ain't that right, Josiah? <laughs> 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 we, we see him going off to work. Oh, it's time to go to work. All right, have a good day. Come in. Oh, hey, Josiah, how was your day? It was good. That's the word. It was good. What's that? Three? Three words. <laughs> Three words, and he's up. <laughs> and he, you can hear him through the night, boy. He'd be up and he's playing. He's playing somebody with these games, boy. And uh, they, they're going for it. But that's, that's their world. And you think about, I keep re referencing to the children in Ukraine because they had teenagers just like ours. Mm -hmm. And now everybody's got to leave home. Mm -hmm. You know, they got to leave that familiar and they dealing with a war yeah. that they had not been trained for. Mm -hmm. Our war as Christians are spiritual wars. We fight in the spirit. Because Paul has told us in Ephesians 6 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and, and darkness and high places, powers and authorities. You know, that's calling out our name, that's accusing us and want to harm us. Especially women. Especially women. Because we give birth. Yes. To that one that's going to be raising their hands to the Almighty. We give birth to yeah. that one that's going to say, God Almighty, you are you are true. That one that's going to be praising the Lord. He doesn't want us to have a child and, and, and keep this thing going. And it's praising God. You praising God. And you just raising up a nation of people that's praising God. So it wants to take, have, take us out. Abort that baby. Don't have that baby. Kill it. Didn't Herod do that? Did he send out the soldiers to go into the homes to take the baby boys? Yeah. Didn't Pharaoh send out a message? Let's get the baby boys. Yes. Throw them in the water. Kill them. Yes. Always kill them. Mm -hmm. Want to kill your dreams. Want to kill your hopes. Want to do all of that. As he sucked the life out of Eve. The serpent sucked the life out of Eve. Sucked the life out of Adam. He sucked the life, the good life, out of this earth. He sucked the life out of the animals and everything that crawl and the birds of the air and the fish. He sucked the life. 
Everything became cursed. Yes, yes. Amen. Everything became cursed. Can't have a, a, a vegetable. Some of these vegetables only last a day. Yeah. <laughs> you get ready to use it and it's already spoiled. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. The land is rough and tough. Is weeds? You don't have to do anything for the beautiful weeds to come forth. <laughs> Maybe we should cut the grass and remove the grass and let the weeds grow. You know, it'll be easier. But Adam's task, because of the sin, was it was going to be a burden for it. It's going to be hard to do anything with the ground, and it's still. It's still. Things are still going under the curse. More things are happening. The weather is changing. All of these things that they say is, is happening is because of the curse. People living in the perfect paradise, as I said yesterday. But they forfeit that. Amen? Amen. So I, I got some read, but I want to do this. This part of the scripture is from uh, the Amplified Version. In Genesis 3, 8 through 9, 19. And like I said, I'm not going to be before you long. And uh, this is Mother's Day. So I know there are a lot of plans out there and everything. I know the restaurants and things are crowded. And oh my goodness, the movie theaters and just places where you could go. It's a beautiful day God has given us. And we're just grateful. So Genesis 3, verse 8 through 19 in the Amplified Version said, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool afternoon breeze of the day. So the man and his wife hid and kept themselves hidden from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you walking in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. Then God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten fruit from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, well, the woman whom you gave to, gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is that you have done? <laughs> what is that you have done? And the woman said, well, the serpent beguiled me and beguiled and deceived me and I ate from the forbidden tree. And the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than any animal of the field. And on your belly, you shall, oh, uh, wait a minute. On your belly, you shall go. Hallelujah. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. And dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, this is my verse that I'm using, I will put in enmity, that's uh, open hostility between you and the woman. And between your seed, uh, the offspring of her seed, and shall fatally, he shall fatally bruise your head. And you should only bruise his heel. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. Hallelujah. In pain, you will give birth to children. Yet your desire and longing will be for your husband. And he will rule with authority over you and be responsible for you. He will be responsible for you. A lot of men don't know their duty as a husband. The word here saying in the Amplified, he is responsible for his wife or to his wife. In Numbers, there is a spot where it says if the woman makes, a, let's say, a, a, somebody came through and she made a vow to that person, you know, that she's going to uh, pledge so much money on a contract or something like that. Yeah. The husband has the power to cancel it. If he finds out and that she's made a contract or whatever at this time, he, was, he had the power to cancel out any contract that she made. But if he did not say anything, the contract stood. So this word is saying he is responsible. And I heard this one uh, godly man on the radio was talking about uh, when you get married, that how can you hit upon that in which you're supposed to be protecting? 
You're supposed to protect her. Right. Why are you the one harming her? Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right. And he will rule with authority over you and be responsible for you. Then to Adam, the Lord God said, because you have listened attentively to the voice of your wife and have eaten fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it, uh, eat of it. The ground is now under a curse because of you. In sorrow and toil, you shall eat the fruits of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles, it shall grow for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face, you will eat bread until you return to the ground. For from it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen? God, that's something. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Wow. Powerful. All of that done then. You go all the way to Luke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to um, Luke verse 1. Hallelujah. Luke, you can go in the NIV. That's the rest of my scriptures will be in the NIV. Luke 1 26. Now Mary is coming on the scene. We know the damage has been done. We know the man and the woman were put out of the garden. They were put out of paradise. And God sent an angel with a sword to guard the garden. So they would not go, no one would go in there and eat the fruit of the tree of life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So 126. Let me get the glasses on for this one. Now with Jesus, uh, Jesus is coming on the scene. Mary is, is on the scene and uh, Joseph is on the scene. And these are different characters that are on the scene here. You got uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth. You know, if we were doing an act, these are the people that would be involved in this next uh, stage opening, right? <laughs> Amen. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. To a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. He was older. And we think that she was about 16 or 17. But he was an older man. And this was already set. And this pledge of marriage is just like they were already married. We would call ours an engagement. You're being engaged. You got a ring. But the vows have not been made. So therefore you don't have to go and get a divorce. You can just hand them back their ring or keep the ring or whatever and just, you're done. But not this. You would have to go and do a divorce just like you would have to do if you were married. Even though they had not consummated the marriage or anything like that. Amen? Amen. And she's a virgin. Her name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Remember, this is a 16-year-old. The angel has appeared to this 16 or 17-year-old girl. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Now, uh, yes, I'm shaking in my boots. <laughs> An angel is talking to me. I am shaking in my boots. I don't know what this kind of greeting is, is or what's going on. This girl was on about her, or her business, maybe in the garden. I don't know, you know, picking some tomatoes or something. Who knows? But she's on, you know, doing her own thing. And he said, do not be afraid, but Mary, you have found favor with God. This young girl has found favor with God. Hallelujah. It's hard to get out to want to come to church, right? But she has found favor with God. There was something about this young woman. She, she kept herself for one thing, and because she, she was still a virgin. She kept herself, but it's something about her that 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 drew the attention even more so that God would send a messenger to her, the angel Gabriel, to, to come to her. Hallelujah. And then he gives her this message. After finding favor with God, you will be 
with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. The first thing we would be like, no, you're not pregnant, baby. You're not pregnant. Uh -uh, you're not pregnant. We got to do something. Right? Right? right. Mm -hmm. Used to be in the day they would send them down south or send them up north. And uh, when they come back, that was their they little sister or their little brother. <laughs> you know, and they would call them that. And that, that was actually their child. <laughs> and we say he would, and, and he's talking to her still, and he's telling her that this baby, this son that you're gonna have, God is uh, would be with you. You would be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, and he would be great, and we'd be called the Son of the Most High. A lot of information he's giving this 16 or 17 year old girl. He's gonna be great. Now, hearing something like that, I'm sure her, her heart and her mind just, you know, like just excited. Just excited. When we get a, that good word from God, it's an excitement. It, it, it builds us up. We're ready to go forth. Ah, ha, hallelujah, Lord. This ain't a dog that we're talking about. This ain't a chatty Cathy. You remember those dogs that can talk? You pull the string. It's not a chatty Cathy dog. Hallelujah. It's not one of them you can go in there and shop and fix up your own. You, you put it on what you want it to do and all this and what, it, what you want it to be. No, no, no. This baby's already coming with his name. All the work has been done with this baby. You ain't got to worry about a thing. You don't have to do any more doctor's appointments. Oh, this seed is covered. This seed is holy. This seed is righteous. This seed is powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This seed is the seed of God. Hallelujah. To this young girl. Hallelujah. She had no idea what all was getting ready to happen in her life. The plans God had for her. God had her fully covered. Had this young girl with an older man. This man is going to be responsible for her. This man is going to cover her going out and coming in. When she sit out and when she get up. He was a godly man. He was a righteous man. Hallelujah. Gonna treat her well. Gonna love the child as if it's his own. Is it as if it's his own child? He gonna love this child. Hallelujah! You go back in the Word and you find out he received messages on how to protect the child. And he was a man that when God spoke, he moved out. If God said you gotta go now because Pharaoh is after this baby, he packed up everything that they could pack up, and they were on the road. Hallelujah. When God is telling you something, be obedient to that thing. Because we already know there's an enemy that's on in pursuit for us. That's why I say you got to be in the warfare. You got to be ready. See, God has given us spiritual weapons. They didn't have that, those weapons then. He had to get everything dressed and ready. She had to get ready and she had to go. You know, they're not dealing with a morning sickness or anything like that. See, there's a lot of details that, the, that God did not give us on that because he didn't want us to dwell on it. But he wanted you to look at his power. Look at his strength and what he is doing in her life and how he can protect her and how he can keep her regardless. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, he going to be great. And be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David. This little young girl, you know. <laughs> wow. This sounds like a king, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. And she thinking maybe like a little princess. And he, and, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. A king? A throne? A kingdom? My baby? Well, I'm going to have a baby? Yeah. That's the mind. I'm going to have a baby. Yeah. And I haven't even been with a man. Right. Hallelujah. She says in verse 34, how will this be? Mary asked the angel. 
since I am a virgin and the angel, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. And we don't have to worry about how he did that. How many of you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? He overshadowed you. He's overshadowed you. And the same way he overshadowed you and put his seed in it, the Holy Spirit in you, is what he did to Mary. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even Elizabeth. Your relative is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Yeah, she, she was kept from having kids all those years. Elizabeth was. All those years. But the right timing for God's purpose. The right timing for his purpose. When Mary had to come on the scene, get her information, and then go and visit uh, uh, Elizabeth. Hallelujah. It's all in God's time. You don't have to worry. God's got it. Hallelujah. Said at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And she had to go, go, go. after Angel left, I, I gotta get ready, I gotta go visit uh, Cuz. <laughs> I, I gotta go visit her. Even though Elizabeth is a lot older. A lot older than her. John, a lot older. But God gonna send you to the right one. And he's gonna tell, continue to confirm that thing he has said to you. Yes. He don't want you to get discouraged. He don't want you to get off. He wants you to stay focused and he wants you to pay attention and he wants you to do what he is calling you to do. Because God got something going on. You don't know what all it is. Your mind may be saying this and that, but honey, I, I guarantee it's probably way bigger than that. Hallelujah. There's some roots he's getting ready to deal with. Hallelujah. When this baby come on the scene, he got to deal with Sadducees, Pharisees, high chiefs, uh, kings and queens and all this other stuff. He got to put all of that under his feet. Yeah. 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 Mm. Sickness and death. He got to deal with all of that. Hallelujah. This baby. Hallelujah. This baby is something else. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know that the that, that's the uh, Incredibles too? Mm -hmm. That little baby. <laughs> he turned and he Yeah, yeah. Jack, the baby what's it? Jack Jack. Baby Jack Jack. He turned into whatever he needs to turn into. You can't deal with baby Jack Jack. Well, hey, Jesus is greater than baby Jack Jack. Hallelujah. You can't deal with him. You know, when he was 12, he went into the temple and amazed the teachers. Amazed them. They just listening to this baby, this baby boy, this, this, this young kid just talk about God, God's house. Probably telling them how it should be run. Huh? How to be ready and how to go about it. Woo, the do's and don'ts and, and how the kingdom of God is watching over you when you're in God's house. Now, it ain't just us in here. There are angels in this room. There are angels all, all around. You think you're just sitting in a chair. You think you're just listening to me. But we are in a heavenly realm. Hallelujah. We're in a spiritual realm. Hearing spiritual words. Getting spiritual insight. Hallelujah. When the power of the most high. Mm, mm, mm. So she goes and she greets her. Verse 41. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, when the mother heard the greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. And it's like, you know, you're pregnant, you hear it, but the baby is responding to it. 
you're going to respond to the word of God. If God is in you, the Holy Spirit is in you, you're going to respond. When that music is going forth, why are you waving or raising up your hand at certain times? Why are you clapping and playing tambourines at certain times? Because the Spirit, Spirit is touched. And you are responding to it. So when, when she heard the uh, Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice, she, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Hallelujah. And she's speaking up. She's responding. She is uh, prophesying. Yes. Hallelujah. You're blessed. Mary, you are so blessed. Yeah. Giving Mary that encouragement that she needed this time. Yeah. Building her up at this time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. Say, blessed, you are, uh, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And as soon as the sound of your greeting re reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, this is all just feeding into Mary. I mean, it would just be feeding into me. I'd be like, uh, you know, Princess Diana mm. <laughs> with the flash show. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm Jesus, a mother. Yeah, the angel already gave him a name. I didn't have to worry about it. And I'm, I'm a virgin. I am so powerful. God loves me more than any other woman. I'm favorite. The baby... Just leaped in her womb. And, <laughs> and then she spoke that. Yes, she did. And yeah. I don't know. Right. I got to go home and have my tea. <laughs> All right, Joseph is there. Right. He's waiting. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, yeah. God going to tell you, you're going to travel all over the world. You're going to have an airplane and all of these are things that has been told to us in this yeah. ministry. Yeah. That we will have a plane and we're going to do all these oh. things. And, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> but God doesn't tell you the time. Because we heard it more than once. So God is speaking some things that uh, I don't know if Jan and Jeff going to get a chance to, you know, we have to be like those in, in the chapter 11 of Hebrews. We received it and we saw it from afar. Because <laughs> it ain't here today, but we see it. There it is. Josiah is the preacher now. Look at Josiah. Josiah got a plane for everlasting word church. Call me on the drums. David being an evangelist. Hallelujah, Jocelyn in here. She she's a singer. Go, Jocelyn. Prophetess. Jameson, hey, Jameson is right there. Ah, Jameson, the sister pastor in the house. Hallelujah. They done took it to a whole nother level. But we saw it from afar. We didn't say, oh, that thing ain't gonna never happen. Yes, it will. Hallelujah. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. <laughs> Amen. So, oh, you know, just this 16, 17-year-old girl. Hallelujah. All right, let's move on. I, I'm, I'm getting close to the end here. There are problems here that this a young, first-time young mother is going to face. I want to get this one, last one in here. Let me see. Uh, where they go to the uh, the baby is born and they go to uh, the temple. Hallelujah. All right, I got it here somewhere. I don't know what happened to it. Okay, look at uh, 2.21 of Luke. On the eighth day when it was time to circumcise the baby, 
And he was named Jesus. That's when he got the name. The name had already been given, but they didn't have to worry about that. The name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. That he even been conceived had the name. And when the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem. They took him to church to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what was said in the law of the Lord a pair of doves or two young pigeons so they had to go and do that get the baby you know uh, he got his name and all these other things that they had to do they had to get everything perfectly done in line with the law get that completed because the door is getting ready to shut on those things amen, amen? but Jesus came into at, at that time you know, this is what the Jews were doing Okay, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. He was moved by the Holy Spirit, so he went into the temple courts. And when the parents were coming in with Jesus to do with him what it was the custom of the law required, Simeon, this old man, took him in his arms and praised God, saying, and now parent, the parents are standing right there, this young girl standing right there, Joseph is right there. Sovereign Lord, this is what he is speaking over him. As you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. He's looking down at this baby that he got in his arms. Which you have pre prepared in the sight of all people. A life for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Now the child's father and mother, they reveled, they marveled, I'm sorry, at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed the parents and then he said to Mary, the mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. Amen. And to be a sign that would be spoken against. So that the thoughts of many hearts would be revealed. And a sword would pierce your own soul too. Wow. Wow. Mm, not so much of a good word there, right? <laughs> that's, some, that's some deep stuff that she's got to try. Her and her husband figure out what is this. What do you mean a pierce? A uh, sword is going to pierce my soul. What is this going to happen when all these things, these great things begin to go forth? Hallelujah. So we see here that okay. So we see here that there are problems here that she's going to face. She already is facing the community because they were lying on her. They were saying that she already had an affair. They was telling Joseph these things. That woman already had her first. She was already pregnant and all that. Remember, he wanted to divorce her when he first found out. and But the angel had to come and tell him, you know, uh-uh, don't divorce her. You know, because he's got to be responsible for that baby. <laughs> and Joseph, uh, he is believing the report that Mary has told him. So she, she's facing these issues. Where is her family? We don't get any backup on what's going on with her family. We, we don't get any uh, support of hearing uh, of her friend. Uh, and so we only get that where she went to visit her uh, older relative was Elizabeth. I think Elizabeth, she was able to glean some learning uh, from Elizabeth. Elizabeth was already six months into her pregnancy when Mary went, and Mary was with her for three months. So uh, during that time, she at least got uh, the understanding of pregnancy, what is happening to her. And she was able to help this older woman, you know, uh, it, it also. So they were there for one another. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the joy of Mary's heart, we see a few things, those that we just read, but here's a list of some more things. To see her son do the first miracle, turning the water to, to wine. Remember she made him do that? Yeah. And he was obedient. He said, my, uh, woman, my time has not come. She was like, get busy. Right. <laughs> Y'all get the water jugs. He's getting ready to start. Right. Sometimes you feel like you're not ready. But God is saying you are ready. I'm sure she didn't think she was ready. But God was saying uh, you are ready. Amen. Amen. 
Because he's going to do the other part. I didn't think I could get up here today. I, my body was dragging. I was dragging like a grasshopper. Hallelujah. <laughs> dragging his behind after you pull his legs off. You ever pull the legs off a grasshopper? No? No. No. I used to catch him. Catch him and pull the legs off of him and watch him drag their butt. <laughs> They take their leg and they drag it in their butt. Y'all try it sometime. <laughs> no, Curtis, she said no. <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. Where you bring all this old stuff from? Hallelujah. Okay, what did I just say about the grasshopper, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then he was uh, the joy of Mary's heart. Uh, and he was healing people. From town to town and city to city. That's a good thing. That makes you a mother proud. You know, you want your kid to be a doctor. Because he's doing good things. And he can take care of you. Like Johnny says, she wants Tommy to be a dentist. <laughs> so he can work on all our teeth. <laughs> hey, you know, parents do have plans for the kids. You know, I, this is what I can see you doing. You know. And so he did. He went around. He was healing people from city to city. He raising the dead. Dad, you could talk to Lazarus about that and many more. He was delivering people from demon possession. Those people that were really out of their mind. And God, Jesus was walking and telling that demon to come out and shut up. And it was obeying. He, he's walking on water. He's feeding multitudes of people. We're just using five loaves of bread and two small fish. And this is Mary. This is Mary's boy. Amen. He started this out at 30. Mm -hmm. See, we done left from the eight days and the 12 year old being in the temple. Now he's 30. So if she was 16 or 17, now she's like, she's still under 50. So I would say she's pretty good, a young woman. She's still under 50 years old when her son is going about. So yeah, she can walk those streets with him. She can be with that multitude of the women. He, his ministry was supported by women. And so he was able to, uh, his mother was able to march with them. When they go somewhere, she's, got, uh, she's young enough where she can help fix food and all of that. Come on, Mary was in the crowd. She ain't leaving that baby. <laughs> now, James and Judas and the rest of her kids, y'all might have to stay home. James, y'all fix him some food. Fix the rest of the kids some food, but I'm going with Jesus. Right, right. I'll be back. I don't know when Jesus is going to get through and, and uh, you know, in the 10 cities he's getting ready to go to, but right. we'll be back. But I, I, I got to watch my boy. Amen. I don't know what the enemy might try to do, yeah. but I know he's special. Yeah. Joseph ain't on the scene, so mm -hmm. it falls to the next parent most of the time. So, you know, she watching over that baby. She ain't left him. Mm -mm. Too much has been said, and he's done too much. And she knows who he is. <laughs> if didn't nobody else believe it, her and uh, what well, she knew. And Joseph knew. He had the angels coming to him. So those are some of the joys of her heart. Now we're going to turn. We're going to turn, and we're going to look at the pain. Remember when Simeon came in the temple, and he gave that word, when he was eight days old, that word was given. Now, Jesus is in his 30s, his early 30s. He could be 31 by now or something like 32. But the piercing, 33, he was 33 because he died at 33 and a half. So that piercing of her soul is coming forth. We see how she loves her son, how she loved this baby because he wasn't an ordinary baby with the calling on his life. Even though he was in a uh, 100% human, but he was also 100% God. Mm -hmm. mm, babies, you know, walking on wa water and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So, when they're cheering, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. That's the joy. That's my baby. Riding on that donkey going there. That's my baby. And, 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 and it's filled with joy. It's filled with joy. Turn around. One of the disciples, a good friend, he goes and um, he sells Jesus out, basically, for 30 pieces of silver. Y'all with me with the story? Yeah. Yeah. And then they come looking for Jesus. 
And Jesus, uh, Mary, know all of this is going on. They're looking for my baby. They were cheering yesterday. Now they're talking about uh, what? A crucify him. Crucify him. She knew what a crucifixion was going to look like. She knew what a crucifixion was going to, uh, uh, the pain and all of that, the suffering that deals, that goes with that. When a person hadn't done anything wrong, he only went about doing good and loving others and trying to make sure that he destroyed the works of the devil over their lives. That's why he was healing. That's why he was delivering. He was destroying the work of the devil on their life. So that you can see Jesus, so that you can see God working, restoring, bringing people back to himself. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This woman has been in an emotional roller coaster. Because remember one while his own siblings didn't believe in him. They didn't trust him. Nope. Mm -mm. No, yeah, well, why don't you do this? I want you to do that. You know how siblings can be. I'm sure she had to break that up a lot. Leave Jesus alone. He's outside praying. <laughs> He's outside praying. Y'all leave him alone. He's keeping everything going here. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Mom was watching. And, and you know, it's a lot that in the book of John, he says there is a lot of other stories that have been written, but they weren't put in here. He said, if it was, it'd be too many. You know? So you think about it. Each one of us has been touched by God. If we wrote a book on it, that's extra books. So during the time, and still now, God, he hasn't ceased in doing his miracles or his signs and his wonders. So now they're taking him and they're putting him on this wooden cursed cross. That's a curse to be put up on that thing. But he's cursed so that he can take in all of our sins. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. All of our heartache, all of our pain, all of the things that mess with our mind. He paid a price for that so that we can have joy and peace and all uh, everlasting life. Everything that Eve opened that door up, oh, yeah. Mary walked with this baby. So that, so that those things can be taken care of. She sacrificed herself so that those things can be taken care of. She sacrificed herself and said, let it be unto me what God want to do so that we can walk in uh, the blessings of God here on earth. We ain't got to worry about the tree and all. God said all the food is good if you bless it. All of it is good. And don't raise the questions about where was this fixed and how did they fix it? Because it, it may have been done at a temple where they worship uh, their pagan gods. Amen. But we eat our food and we bless our food and we go forth. Because God has made it possible. Amen. 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 So then, here's our last reading. Revelation chapter 4. The throne in heaven. And Jesus says, I am the Omega, Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. <laughs> he conquered all of everything that needed to be conquered. He did it. Sat down at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. Then John is saying here, After this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me uh, like a trumpet said, Come up here. And I will show you what must take place after this. And once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven. With someone sitting on this throne that's in heaven. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. A rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones. This is Mary's baby. That baby. That, that she was embarrassed about at times when people talked about her at times and all of these other things. This baby's in heaven sitting on a throne. <laughs> they were, these uh, 24 elders, they were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. And before the throne, seven lights were blazing. And these are the seven spirits of God. Also, before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass 
clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were the four living creatures. And they were covered with eyes in front of them, in back of them. And the first living creature, he looked like a lion. And the second one looked like an ox. And the third one had a face like a man. And the fourth one was like a, a flying eagle. And each of the four living creatures had six wings. This is some power. Powerful stuff here. And these, these are angels, and they were covered with eyes all around. Even under their wings, there were eyes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne. People are falling before him. These elders are falling before him. Angels are falling before him. Hallelujah. And they worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and they say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And by your will, they were created and, and have their being. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Think about it. Think about it. He's keeping you every day. Keeping you. No matter what troubles you're facing, no matter what hardship, he's still keeping you. That's why he's worthy of all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Amen. I'm close there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word says when we are weak, you are strong. So every area we see that Mary was weak in, Lord, we see your strength. And everything that you said was going to happen, it happened. And Lord, we pray that even in our lives, everything that you desire to happen, let it happen. You are, we trust you completely with our soul, with our spirit, with our mind, our body. We trust you, Lord. Amen. If there's anyone here who has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, if you do not know, that if you were to die today, that you would go to heaven, that can be fixed right now. Right now. But you really need to know. When people are getting shot in grocery stores, places where you're going to shop could be the place that you take your last breath. It could be that. But the thing of it is, you can make sure that if that did happen to you, you could make sure that you're going to live forever Amen. with God, not separated from God. Amen. Who wants to be separated from the king of kings? Who want to be separated from seeing what we just uh, 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 read in Revelation? Who want to miss that? Who want to miss seeing the creator, being with the creator when it's only a prayer? When he paid the price. If you need peace, you need joy. I'm saying laughter. I said joy. Well, Spiritual joy. Yes. Hallelujah. That joy that carries some strength in it. That joy, it has the peace in it. Because you can't have it without the peace. Can't have joy without having peace. Hallelujah. But if you got peace, you can get the joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you got the peace, get the joy. Get it. Recognize. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Your strength comes from the Lord. Yes. All of it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. I pray for mothers all around the world, Lord. Some don't, they don't celebrate this day, but Lord, we know every day is a day on, that you have given us, and we're praying for them that this be a good day, Lord God, for them. We pray for those that stay in refugee camps. Lord God, where they can't just be their household, you know, under the tent, whatever, Lord God. They're sharing it with so many other people and just, 
life is just, the enemy is busy. But Lord, you have destroyed the works of the enemy. So we're praying for people in refugee camps. We're praying for the Ukraine. We're praying for those mothers, even in Russia, Lord God, that, that are praying for this thing to end. This thing to end. We're praying for the Haitians, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That there are those that practice voodoo and all this other stuff. They put that mess down, Lord God. Those that practice sacred arts and all of that, put it down in the name of Jesus. Those mothers that that, that, that go by the, the horoscope and all these other things that, that speak to them, Lord God. But that they put those things down, Lord. We're praying for godly mothers to come forth in the name of Jesus. That you touch their hearts and their mind, Lord God. Because you have the plan. You have the plan and you have the hope for us, Lord. All of us. Lord, we pray for people that are going through hardship right now. Help those mothers. Help those families that are going through hardship, Lord. They need more finances. They need food. They need peace in the house. They need joy in the house, Lord. They need a healing over their loved ones right now, Lord. Heal their loved ones right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And raise them up, Lord God, that they all work as a good unit in the household. We come against the violence and the hatred and the jealousy, even among siblings. In Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the churches that are open in your name, Lord God. They call upon you. They seek you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you're doing here at Everlasting Word Church, Lord God. Building us up and strengthening us. Providing, Lord God, love in the house. Thank you. Wisdom is in the house. Your word is in the house. You are in the house, Lord. And you're welcome always because this is yours. Holy ground is yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I pray for every mother here that they have a very good day. Not just a good day, a very good day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.